Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today we're going to jump into how to edit in Squarespace using the new Fluid Engine Editor. If you've never used Squarespace before or even if you have and you're wondering what Fluid Engine means, basically it's a new editor that Squarespace recently brought out, a new way to edit within Squarespace that's going to replace the old way to edit within Squarespace. We've done two quite important posts on Fluid Engine recently. Most importantly, we've covered what Fluid Engine is, the pros and cons, how to use it, if you should use it, and we've also covered the main differences between the old classic editor and the new Fluid Engine. So you could compare them and decide for yourself what would be the best to use. I tried to link them up here. If that didn't work, I'll definitely link them below the video anyway. So make sure you check out those two videos if you're not sure. And if you're brand new to Squarespace, I would just start with this video because this new editor is live to everyone. So those other videos are really just helping older users transition from the old editor to this new editor. So today we're diving into the meat and potatoes of the new Fluid Engine and I'm going to show you the fundamentals of actually designing in the Fluid Engine. So if you're here to learn the Fluid Engine, let's dive right in. Okay, let's dive right in. So remember that Fluid Engine is only for Squarespace 7.1. If you are using Squarespace 7.0, you're just going to have access to the older classic editor. We've got tons of other tutorials about the classic editor on our YouTube and blog, but today we're gonna to be talking about 7.1, which also previously used the classic editor, but now is transitioning into the Fluid Engine Editor. So if you've never used Squarespace 7.1 before and you're watching this video, today I'm just gonna be talking about editing on page with the specific Fluid Engine. And while that is the majority of how to actually build the site, I do recommend checking out other 7.1 tutorials all about site styles, how to use pages, and other design settings, because that's not what we're gonna be talking about today. We're just gonna be talking about the new on-page editing. If you've used Squarespace 7.1 before, then you'll be happy to know that this new Fluid Engine on-page editing only affects Fluid Engine sections. So everything else on your site is going to be the same. And today we're just going to talk about the new Fluid Engine sections. So while it does sound a little bit daunting having a whole new editor, realistically it's only affecting regular page sections that use blocks. So I think just knowing that makes it a little bit less scary to learn. Everything else remains the same, your site styles, your pages, your list sections, your gallery sections. So I'll show you that now. So every Squarespace 7.1 page is made out of different sections. So you'll see when I hover over the different sections, they're outlined by this blue line and you can see above and below every section, it says add section. So you can build your page up with sections you can move the sections up and down using these arrow keys. You can duplicate sections by clicking on the duplicate button. You can edit section settings by clicking the edit section. And all of those things are also still the same. The biggest difference here is the way that we edit these regular block sections is changing. When you click add section, there's a ton of different things that show up here in this menu, mostly just pre-existing layouts that you can choose from but you'll want to take note of the list and the gallery sections. Although they are sort of integrated into this list, these two types of sections are actually different than regular block sections. You can see the little information bar hovering over the section types, and that's going to indicate that this is a list section or a gallery section. And we have other videos on these sections and basically they just don't use blocks. The content editing is very different and they have all of these great layouts that you can use and start with. Also, when we're talking about list and gallery sections, those are staying the same too. So I'll say it again, the only thing that's changed is the sections that use blocks. So aside from the list and the gallery sections, which are indicated by those little eye markers, you're gonna see all of these section layouts here are made with blocks. So you can't really tell until you click on a section and apply it to your page. But all of these sections are made with blocks. And if you are using a 7.1 site, you should have access to Fluid Engine now, and all of these blocked sections will be in the Fluid Engine editor. Right now, if you scroll to the very bottom, you can add a blank section with the classic editor, or you can click through to find some pre-built sections but I don't believe this is going to be around for too much longer. I believe Squarespace is planning to roll this out and just have Fluid Engine indefinitely. 
So if you don't see that, that's okay. I'm gonna teach you how to use the Fluid Engine now. So let's just go ahead and add a blank section. And that is going to be our Fluid Engine section. So I should also note too, if you do have an existing 7.1 site with classic editor sections like this one, so this is just a regular classic editor section, you can at the moment convert your classic editor sections to Fluid Engine by clicking this upgrade button. Before you go through and upgrade all your sections, first know that you can't convert them back. So you can only upgrade to Fluid Engine, you can't downgrade back to Classic Editor. So you wanna be really sure that this is something that you wanna do before you click that button. And I would recommend getting really familiar first with Fluid Engine from this tutorial and just playing around with new sections before you go and convert any of your existing sections because you just really wanna make sure that the layout that you want to achieve is possible in Fluid Engine and you know how to create it. So you can see these ones say upgrade because they're classic editor sections. And this section here says add block. So the Fluid Engine sections still use blocks. So blocks are the building blocks of our site. To add a block, now you actually have to click on the add block button instead of clicking plus around the section. And the block menu is essentially exactly the same. This is basically how we build sites. So we make blocks for text, button, images, and essentially anything you wanna add on your page, there is probably a block for it somewhere in here. So this is what Squarespace is famous for, is basically building blocks for your site. So it's really as simple as clicking a block, adding it to your section, and then positioning it where you want it to be. So when you start building in Fluid Engine, the most important thing I think, and to make the designing so much easier, is to click the letter G on your keyboard. And you're instantly gonna see that grid pop up. And this grid is just going to make designing a lot easier because you can see exactly where you're positioning things. Every block will have this container with these controls around it so you can resize the whole block. And you can also click and drag your block anywhere around this grid. Every block will have its own settings and every block's settings are different. So you'll notice when you click on the block once, there's a little panel of settings here and like I said, every block setting is different, so there might be more settings here depending on which block you're using, but it's really important to note that every block has settings and to adjust anything within that block, this is where you will find the settings for every block. So you'll see alignment settings here for most blocks and you'll also see this little edit icon. So if you click on this, this is gonna open up another panel of settings. So for the text block that we're using now, there's not really many settings, but if we add something like an image block, you'll see the row of settings here. And if we click on the settings, you'll immediately see that there's a lot more settings within this panel. So that's something to be very aware of. And this is something that opens up a ton of settings. I'm not gonna go into all the different block settings today because that would take hours. Every block has settings and some blocks have a lot of settings. But just knowing where those settings are accessed is really important because this is gonna open up a whole lot of extra design options for you when you know how to access and play around with the block settings. So that really is the fundamentals of designing your pages. It's adding blocks, moving them around, adding in your block settings and just adjusting the size of things until you're happy with your section. And I think you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want to. If you just want to add some simple text, I'll just put some placeholder text in this block. We can adjust it to the size we want. We can add an image. So I'm going to open up the settings and I'm either going to add an image from my computer or I'm going to select from my existing library. And now I've added an image. So it can be really simple, just adding simple blocks to where you want them on the page. Now, if you do wanna take it a little bit further, I'm gonna go into some more advanced settings for a few specific blocks and show you a few design tricks that I think are important while designing within this Fluid Engine. But don't let this overwhelm you. And I promise once you get into Fluid Engine and start playing around, it does get easier and faster. So let's talk about this grid, first of all. You can see that because I added a bunch of text down the bottom here, the grid expanded quite far, and you can actually continually adjust these rows 
in your grid as you design. So obviously I don't want all of this extra space, but you can add as much space as you want depending on your design by clicking on this little arrow and dragging down or dragging all the way back up. So I'm gonna drag up to remove the space at the bottom. You can also adjust that exact same thing by clicking edit section and playing around with the row count number here. So you can see as I increase that number, it's increasing the rows at the bottom. Now it won't let you bring it up any further if any blocks are in the way. Some more information about the grid if you wanna get a little bit more advanced. If you click edit section, you can edit the gaps in the grid which is useful if you want to either increase the space between elements or decrease the space between elements. So if you're just doing sort of standard design and trying to keep it simple, I probably wouldn't even go near those settings and just leave the default settings in there because most of the time those are gonna be fine. If you wanna adjust the padding on the top or the bottom of your section, you can play around with the section settings down here. So this first section is really for grid settings and this section is for the overall section settings. So if you turn off fill screen, it's going to just use the grid settings and you're gonna have that grid flush all the way to the edge of your section, which you can create really cool designs with and I'll show you in a moment. But if we turn that off, you then have these height settings. So you can see it adds white space or padding above and below your section, small, medium, large, or you can customize it. And then you can also adjust the alignment depending on where you want that grid to be aligned within the section if you have extra padding. So again, quite advanced settings, but play around with them if you are trying to achieve different things with your sections because they might become quite handy. One setting that I particularly love, which is very new for Squarespace, is the fact that we can turn off all padding on the section and we can extend our blocks all the way to the edge of the grid. So this wasn't something that you could do before. There was always some padding in between your sections. Unless you added a background image like what we have up here, we couldn't get images all the way to the edge. So now we can actually drag blocks all the way to the edges of our section. Now I'm just going to adjust the image settings here to show you how this works. And I will touch on these image settings soon, so don't worry so much about that. But I just wanted to show you how we can extend this image to the top and the bottom. And even better, on every section, no matter what the settings are, you can drag the image all the way out to the edge. So now we have like a completely full width image on the left side of our section, which is very exciting and something that we couldn't achieve in Squarespace before without the code. So if you do want to add those full width images, you can do it like this. And you could even do it across the whole section if you just wanted an image there. Okay, so that's pretty much it for how to use the grid. We've learned how to adjust some of the grid settings over here in the section settings. And the only other aspect really of using the grid is adding blocks to it and adjusting them within the grid until you're happy with how your page looks. So while there is a lot of customization going on here, when it comes down to it, it's pretty much just as simple as that. So now let's go back to blocks because there are quite a lot of settings within blocks that are gonna make a big difference to how your design looks and how to actually create your layouts with blocks in this grid. So we've added an image, we've added a text, and we've touched on how every block has its own settings. So I just wanna reiterate that is that if you're trying to adjust something for your block, just remember to click on it and open up those extra settings or have a look at the settings that are in this bar as you'll probably find what you're looking for there. Because we're using this grid, we can adjust the height of blocks. And because we can adjust the height of blocks, you can see that the block here in this instant is much bigger than the actual text that's in it. So I like to call this the block container and the block content is what I would call whatever's inside of the block. Because in this new Fluid Engine, you can adjust the block container to be a completely different size than whatever's inside the block. And you're probably wondering why I can adjust this so far. But the cool thing is, is that now with every block in the Fluid Engine, we can adjust the content alignment. So this will align the content within whatever block container you've set. So you can see as I adjust the container, this is gonna adjust the alignment of the content within that block. So you don't necessarily have to use this. You could just 
you can just make the block container small and as you add more content it will make itself bigger but if you do want to align something specifically vertically or in some cases we can do it horizontally then this is a really cool feature that you could use again it's something that's a little bit more advanced you don't have to use it but just know that, that it's there because you might wonder why we can adjust these containers to be so large or why everything has this alignment adjustment and this is why but of course if you can't find a use for it in your design don't use it don't worry about it just stick to the standard alignment and making your block container the same size as your content. Another setting that you're going to see that is really important is the move forward or move backward setting. So we don't see this now on any of our settings because nothing is overlapping within our grid. But if I take this image and this text and I overlap them, which is something very cool and new we can do, which we couldn't do before in the classic editor, if we click on these blocks now, you'll see this new setting, which is move backward or bring forward. So if I click on the image, you'll see move forward. So I can actually adjust the order of which these are on the page. So not only do we have the new overlap, but we can also adjust things forward and backward, which is obviously very important if you are planning to overlap things. As soon as you move those two elements away from each other though, that move forward and backward will disappear. The three blocks that I find that we use the most in our designs and that people creating simple websites use the most too are text blocks, image blocks, and also button blocks. So these are really, three really common blocks that we often use. And I think they're the blocks that really make up the main design of your website. Of course, we have so many other blocks to choose from for more specific things like forms or videos. And you may use the, all of these things around your site, but I imagine that the most common blocks you'll be using are text, image, and button blocks. So we've touched on some of the text block settings before. There really isn't too many settings for the text block, just vertical alignment. And also you can add a background color to your text block. Just remember that to actually edit the text, you can double click. It will put your cursor inside the text block and you're gonna have all of your standard text settings here. So you can choose from heading one, two, three, four, paragraph one, two, and three. And these are all of the text settings that you set up in your site styles. Then you have all of your other basic text settings here in this toolbar. And then if you want to access those design settings again, you just need to click out of the text block and click it again once and you'll have access to those settings. So it's a little bit tricky because sometimes you want to edit inside and sometimes you want to edit the block. So you just have to get comfortable with the different clicks it takes to edit those things. Next up is image blocks and you probably saw me make some adjustments earlier on the image block and I'm gonna show you quickly what those do. So if we double click or click once and click to open the image block settings, Everything about the image block is the same as it used to be, except one particular setting. So if you've never used image blocks before, you can upload your image here, you can add a link, you can even access a library of your images. Definitely check out our other video all about your image library if you're not sure about that. But this first content panel is pretty straightforward. Under design though, there are new settings for fit and fill. And then you also have the option for shape and it is pretty self-explanatory. Essentially, it just crops your images into the shape that you choose. So that is actually really a really cool feature and I hope they continue to bring out more shapes. But the two settings that are really important for designing within this Fluid Engine grid is the fit and the fill. So essentially, fit will leave your image in the same ratio as exactly how you uploaded it. It's not going to crop your image at all. Then if you choose fill, it's actually going to crop your image and stretch it to fit within the container that you've set. So both of these options are quite essential. Fill is so cool if you have an image that you don't mind being cropped depending on how it's stretched. And if you really want to fill up a certain amount of space, and then fit is perfect if you have an image where you really want to display the whole thing. You don't want any part of it to be cropped and it's going to retain that same size. 
while the screen scales up and down. There's also some other fun settings in here, like you can add a corner radius. And of course we have those shapes that we just touched on. So there's a lot you can do with your images in this new Fluid Engine. And even just those three settings, fit, fill and shape, are going to open up so many fun things you can do with your design in these sections. Similarly, we're talking about buttons and they also have a fit or a fill setting. So I'm gonna double click on my button, or again, I can just click and then open up the button settings. Again, we have a content section and we have a design tab. So for the content, this is just where you add your text and you add your link for a button or any other links around your site. You can link directly to a page around your site, an external website, a file to download, an email, or even a phone number. If we come over to the design tab, we're gonna have the three button options. So these are the button options that you set up in your site styles in your button settings. So primary, secondary, and tertiary. If you haven't set those up yet, definitely go into the design site styles section of your site and set those up. But you'll see here there's two options again for fit or fill. So if we look at fit, you can see that the button doesn't span the whole block container. We can change the alignment and it's sort of floating inside this container and it's holding its shape. So much like how the image holds its original shape when it's set to fit, the button will hold its original shape when it's set to fit. And its original shape or size slash padding, whatever you wanna call it, is set up within those site styles like I just talked about. So within your design site styles, you choose the size and the padding of your three different buttons. And if you set your button to fit, it's going to stick to that size. Alternatively, if you change it to fill, it's going to fill up whatever container you've set on the grid. So you can see if I make it bigger, it's going to just follow whatever I've set on the grid. So much like the images, these two options are gonna be really useful depending on what you're trying to achieve with your design. But just keep in mind that you have fit or fill for images and buttons. And whatever you choose is actually gonna make quite a big difference to your design. Okay, so we've talked about the three main blocks and block settings. All other blocks have their own settings too. You may see some more fit or fill block settings in the future, but now you know what fit or fill means and you can adjust all of your blocks to suit whatever you're trying to achieve with your design. So the last two things I wanna talk about is how to adjust the blocks within the grid and sort of best practices for making sure things look good on all screens. So this is something that is a little bit more advanced, but I think is quite important and might actually help you with any issues you're having with overlapping or blocks running into each other. So obviously with this Fluid Engine, we have a lot of flexibility and we can overlap blocks. We can move blocks sort of anywhere within the grid. And while that's really fun, it can cause a few little issues if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So my first sort of best practice tip would be to only pull elements outside of that grid intentionally. And I would really only recommend doing that with images. So you have your set grid here. And if I make my screen a little bit bigger, you can see the grid just stops at the edge and there is this white space beyond that. So if you pull beyond the grid and go all the way to the edge, image is going to go all the way to the edge no matter how big your screen gets. So you can see in this case, now that I've pulled my screen quite a bit wider, the grid still ends here and the image is still going all the way to the edge. Now I'm gonna snap it back to the edge of the grid and show you what it looks like as I bring that in. So you can see this is sort of like a nice container to work to. And if you are gonna be dragging anything to the edge of the screen, you wanna be very intentional about what that is. And I, again, I would only really recommend doing it with images. If I do that with text, it's just not gonna look good 
on bigger screen sizes and we're not going to have any space down the side to read the text. So realistically having text or maybe button elements that go all the way to the edge it just doesn't look good. It's not easy to read. I would recommend keeping elements that need to be readable or usable and aren't just design features, keeping them within that set grid and not pulling them all the way out to the edge. The next thing that I want you to be conscious of is overlapping blocks intentionally. So as we talked about earlier, we can now overlap blocks. So I'm just gonna add another image here and show you what something looks like when it's overlapped intentionally. So we have these two images which are overlapped on purpose. Where things can get a little bit tricky is when you're overlapping things unintentionally. So we talked about earlier how every block has its own container and these containers can span basically to wherever you want to drag them. But just know that if something is within a container, depending on the screen size, it will move anywhere within that container. So you can see right now, if I click out of this container, the text and the button technically aren't touching. But if I hover over these elements, you can see that the text container goes all the way down here and the button container goes all the way up here and actually the containers are overlapping. So if I adjusted my screen, you'll probably see eventually that there's some overlap here that I wasn't intending on and that doesn't look very good. So to avoid that unintentional overlap, just make sure that you haven't overlapped containers unless you've specifically meant to, like these two images. So I'm gonna adjust these containers. So you can see now that those two containers are in their own lane, nothing is overlapping. And now when we make the screen smaller, you'll see that nothing overlaps it and it just all adjusts nicely depending on the screen size. So there's no overlapping happening here because these are two separate containers not overlapping. So that is something very important to keep in mind and something really easy to get wrong or not notice that you've done unless you are really paying attention to those containers. You'll probably also notice a lot when you are designing and moving things around and getting really busy here in the Fluid Engine that particularly with text blocks and also just the size of your section, these will change and adjust as you're editing and you might need to come back and sort of trim things up. So I find very often that when I'm editing in a section, the rows will just keep, a, keep growing and growing and growing. And that's probably my fault for pushing things down because as you push them down and then you bring them back up, the rows don't come back up with the section. And the same thing often happens with the text block. If you add lots of text and then you adjust it, you'll find that your text block container has spanned super far down the page like this. So you might notice that happening quite a lot. And just keep an eye on that because you don't want that same problem happening where you have something here and your text block container has just grown right over top of it. When you're happy with the positioning of your elements, just make sure you grab the bottom of your text block container and just drag it right up so it's nice and flush and just making sure those containers aren't overlapping and making sure everything's nice and tidy. And then the same thing again with your rows at the bottom. You can either click and grab this and drag it up or you can open your edit section and reduce your row count like that. So those are just two things to keep an eye out for that I've noticed happening quite a lot when I've been designing within this Fluid Engine. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this Fluid Engine section editing tutorial. If you're familiar with Squarespace Classic Editor, then you'll already be pretty familiar with all of the blocks and there is a lot of overlap between the two. So it's not like you're starting completely from scratch. It's really just maneuvering things within the grid that's gonna take a bit of learning and making sure you follow those best practices for laying things out in the grid. Now I will mention here, and it's very important to mention, with Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine, the mobile editing experience is completely separate. So I am going to record a separate video on mobile editing and we're gonna dive a bit deeper into that. But if you are editing right now and you just want to jump into it, do know that if you click on the mobile view, you're going to see your section 
laid out with the blocks in order that you added them to the section and it's going to look very different than what you have on desktop. So it's a completely separate editing experience, which is very exciting. It means you can completely redo your mobile site with a totally custom mobile design. Although you don't have to, you can just keep it simple if you want, but it's very exciting because we have so many design options now if we want them. But I'm going to record a whole separate video on editing for mobile and just touching on the best practices there. Though if you have soaked up this video, you will notice that the editing experience is almost exactly the same as it is on desktop. So you just need to click on that little mobile button and feel free to dive into it now because essentially it is very, very similar to what we just did on desktop, just for a slightly different screen size. I wanted to mention that at the end of this video because I don't want you to think you're just done when you're finished the desktop section. You always need to be checking your mobile site and you may need to slightly rearrange things on mobile too. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on with Fluid Engine. I know a lot of people were very reluctant about it in the first place, but hopefully you've had a bit more time to play around, especially if you're coming over from Classic Editor. Maybe now you realize it's actually not that much different. A lot of the stuff is still the same, and some of that newer stuff is actually really beneficial. It's just something I think we have to get used to. If you have any complaints or problems with Fluid Engine, please reach out to Squarespace support directly because they actually track those support tickets and submitting them is actually going to help us make this platform even better for everyone. So let me know in the comments what you think. And I do think it's important to mention too that if you don't want to start from scratch with Fluid Engine and you're struggling with figuring out how to make a nice layout, all of our Squarespace 7.1 templates on our website are all converted to Fluid Engine now. So not only do they come with a beautiful design to start with so that you don't have to start from scratch and all you have to do is just go in and tweak the colors, replace the images, but they also come with our full Fluid Engine tutorials. So we've recorded hours of tutorials on Fluid Engine. And if you really want to learn Fluid Engine quickly and get a site up quickly without having to do it all from scratch, definitely check out our templates because they're a beautiful design to start with that make it so easy. And you get all of the tutorials for Fluid Engine that you might ever need. And of course we keep everything updated much faster in there than we do on YouTube for our paid customer. So definitely check that out at bigcatcreative.com slash templates. I will link it down below also. And if you have any questions about those, just comment below and we'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.